Lesson 1 6 is graphical transformations. You saw the majority of this if you were with me last year for Algebra 2 in Chapter 2 of Algebra 2. And I say that because my Algebra 2 kids just tested on a lot of this stuff. Okay. Now, of course, it's pre cal, so we go a little bit farther with it. There's a little bit more to it, a little more in depth, but a lot of the basics are still there. Um, so let's start just glancing at some basic information. You've kind of got a chart of information up here. Horizontal translations. You guys remember how horizontal translations work? How we know if something's going to move left or right? It's in the parentheses, under the square root, in the absolute value. It's with the x, yes? It's with the variable. And I always say left or right, you go opposite the sign. Okay, if you've been with me, you hear that. So if it says x minus c, you're going to go right c. If it says plus c, you're going to go left c. How do we know when to go up or down? When the number is added or subtracted at the end, or in other words, not with the x, just in the equation somewhere. So plus c is up c, minus c is down c. Okay, reflections. Two of these are old news. One is new. Okay. A reflection across the x-axis is just a negative on the whole function. Okay, a negative in front of the function. A reflection across the y-axis is a negative on the x. So I always remember those as opposite. That if it's going to reflect, if the negative's on the x, it's going to reflect across the y. If the negative's on the whole thing, it's reflecting across the x. Now, this one's new. A reflection through the origin, negative f of negative x. So there's two negatives happening. A negative on the whole function and a negative on the variable. And then stretches and shrinks. Are you guys okay with the word shrinks? Or the other word for shrinks? I'm trying to remember. Compressions or shrinks? Or does it matter to you? You guys are giving me nothing here. And what I would say is be familiar with both. Okay, technically, whether I call them compressions or whether I call them shrinks, they're the same thing. So understand that they are equivalent there. Now, I'm going to jump down to the bottom one for a second. The one you are most familiar with, at least from my class, is y equals c times f of x. In the Algebra 2 book, they say a times f of x. But when you multiply a number across the whole function, this is what we called last year, these are the vertical stretch or shrink, or vertical stretch or compression, okay? Meaning it's going to stretch it up or stretch it down. A, if it's a vertical stretch, that C value is a number bigger than 1. And this is always like the absolute value of that number. It's always the positive number. If it's a, it's a shrink, if the number is less than 1. Okay, so that's what we worked with last year. We always had vertical, vertical stretches, vertical shrinks. A vertical stretch would pull it up and make it skinnier, right? A vertical shrink is going to make it less or shorter, and when it makes it shorter, it appears to go wider. Now, the new one we're adding in this year is... Notice instead of multiplying the whole thing by c, it's dividing x by c. And these, I'll be honest, they're a little bit trickier to figure out. But these are the horizontal stretches and shrinks. And in all honesty, they kind of are the opposite of the vertical. So if you have a horizontal stretch, c is still greater than 1. But notice, where is that c going to be? It's going to be divided by x. Okay, if it's a shrink, C is still less than 1, but it's going to be divided there. Um, the idea, so a horizontal stretch is going to horizontally stretch it, so make it wider. Well, if it's making a horizontal stretch makes it wider, that means that's going to be equivalent to a vertical shrink. Okay, same thing the other way around. 
a horizontal shrink. A horizontal shrink is going to make it skinnier. Well, what makes it skinnier also? A vertical stretch. So you'll see on some of these when we start talking about the horizontals, and it probably won't be until tomorrow would be my guess, but there's multiple different answers. Sometimes a vertical stretch is also equivalent to a horizontal shrink. And we'll talk about that. Okay? So those are your pieces there. Um, little note here. Transformations, which remember these all fall into the general category of transformations, can be performed in any succession, one after another. If the transformation involves stretches, shrinks, or reflections, the order in which the transformations are performed may make a difference. In those cases, pay close attention to your order. Okay. What I would always say, usually you want to do your stretches, shrinks, and reflections before you do any translations. Get it stretched, shrunk, reflected, and then do your left, right, up, down. Okay. That's what I would tend to say there. So, let's look at some of these examples. Example one. Describe how the graph of y equals absolute value x can be transformed to the graph of the given equation. So y equals absolute value of x is your parent function. You guys okay with that vocabulary? Parent function meaning it's the base function. So a, if it's y equals absolute value of x, minus 4. What's that doing? How do I know it's going down 4? Okay, it's outside the absolute value, so it's up or down direction of the sign. Now, do me a favor. Don't just put down four. What's your verb here? Okay, translated, shifted, moved. Give me some kind of verb there, short of just saying down four. Okay, mathematically translated down four is probably your best bet. So translated down four units. However, shifted is a common word there, so I can handle shifted as well. I just, I tend to take off a little bit if you just tell me down four. Okay, give me a mathematical verb there. Okay, B. Y equals absolute value of X plus two. What? Plus two, do you guys agree? It's in the absolute value, so it's with the x, so it's left to right opposite the sign. So since this says plus 2, we're actually going to go left 2. So this is a translated left 2 units. Now, I didn't say it earlier, but officially the title of this section should have been horizontal and vertical translation, shouldn't it? I didn't say it because I didn't want to give you guys any hints. That's definitely Algebra 2 review, right? We do that a lot in Algebra 2, so. Example 2. Finding equations. So I want you to write the equation now. Write the equation for each of the following translations. So A says, shift the graph of y equals x cubed down three units. So they give me y equals x cubed, and they ask me to take it down three. Any thoughts on how I write that? What? Only if you're putting something in with the x. Okay. So he says y equals x cubed minus 3. Are you using parentheses there? No, you don't have to. So on a vertical, on an up or down, there does not have to be any parentheses. And this is down. And so if you look back up above, down is to just go minus 3 at the end. So y equals x cubed minus 3. Cold and I were assuming you just put parentheses around the x cubed, which is not necessary here. OK, 
KB. The graph Y equals X cubed. This time we're going to shift it left two units. How do we shift Y equals X cubed left two units? That's it. Um, parenthesis X squared, X cubed plus two parenthesis. Almost. There's one slight thing I just liked how you said it. Because if I write y equals, which way was this? I, say, I know you said the right. If I write that. Okay, and I don't know what you were thinking, but yeah. So if I write this, realize that this is still up to. I know I put we put parentheses, but this is still up to because is this 2 with the x? No, it's just after the x cubed. Okay, so that would not work. In order to put the 2 with the x, that means you have to move whatever that parent function is. So we have to move the cubed. And so y equals parentheses x, let's see, left 2 plus 2 cubed. And I will even put over here, if you do y equals x cubed plus 2, parentheses. I wrote it over so far, it's not even on the screen. Great. Okay. If you do something like that, that does not work. Okay. Okay. And last one. y equals x minus 1, quantity cubed. And this time we're going to take that original function, write three. Thoughts on what we're going to do here? Trevor? Would you just change the negative one to a, or not negative one, minus one to a minus four? Essentially that's what's going to end up happening, yes. Okay. Because where are we going to put this right at 3? It's going to be in those parentheses with the x, right? So if we put it directly with the x, I'm going to take a step here. Right 3 is minus 3, so I'm going to do x minus 3 minus 1 quantity cubed. That's in the parentheses with the x, yes? The key is there was already a minus 1 there. So it's already moving right 1, and now we're going to move it right 3 more, so that is a total of moving it right 4. So I would definitely clean this up and say y equals x minus 4 quantity cubed. Questions there? Make sure you're asking the questions guys because this is what's going to carry on to Homework, test, making sure you know what you're doing. Okay, example three. We need to talk about reflections. And it's asking me to find an equation for the reflection of f of x equals 5x minus 9 over x squared plus 3. And so we're actually going to practice all three reflections, right? We have three different reflections we can practice. And so we're going to practice all three. So the first one I'm going to practice is how we do a reflection. I really just spelled across wrong. You guys caught that too, didn't you? Besides the fact I pointed it out, but. I'm sure you guys never spell stuff wrong though, right? I am struggling up here. Okay. Across the x-axis. So, if we're going across the x-axis, what's it say up in our list up above? How do we go across the x-axis? Negative f of x. So, if we're going negative f of x, what it means is you multiply the whole function by a negative. I would start by thinking negative, and then you can even put parentheses around your function. So the way I wrote this for right now is negative 
of the, and I put parentheses, so of the fraction 5x minus 9 over x squared plus 3. If this was a typical polynomial where it's just multiple terms, you would multiply each term by negative, yes? This is a fraction. How do we multiply a fraction by a negative? Do we multiply the entire top by a negative and the entire bottom by a negative? What happens if you multiply everything on top by a negative and everything on bottom by a negative? You're multiplying by a positive, aren't you? Because you're multiplying by negative over negative, which is essentially a positive. So what do we need to do to multiply by a negative? Pick top or bottom, okay? Traditionally, we tend to pick top, although make it work for whatever you need to make it work. The other option is you just put the negative out in front of the fraction bar. So not with the top nor with the bottom, but in, directly in front of the fraction bar. What I'm going to go is I'm going to go with let's pick the top or bottom. So I'm going to pick the top. If I pick the top, this is now going to be negative 5x plus 9 over x squared plus 3. That is negative f of x. That is my reflection across the x-axis. Now let's go across the y-axis. Notice I spelled across right the first time this time. What's the rule for across the y-axis? F of negative x. What does f of negative x mean? What do we do with our negative this time? We put the negative on the x, right? Every place there's an x, you put a negative specifically on that x. So since it's 5x, I'm going to write as 5 times negative x minus 9. Over, since it's x squared, we're basically replacing x with negative. So it's negative x to the second plus 3. So every place I saw an x, I substituted in negative x. So on top, 5 times negative x actually is going to become negative 5x, still minus 9. In the denominator, what happens when you take a negative x and raise it to the second power? It's back to positive, right? So it's x squared plus 3. Okay, and the last one? is through the origin. And through the origin is combining both of these, right? So if it's through the origin, you're doing negative f of negative x. So the negative f says we're multiplying the whole fraction by a negative. The negative x says, like last time, we're putting the negative on each of the x's. So 5 times negative x minus 9 over negative x to the second plus 3. In this situation, I would clean up the negative x's first and worry about the negative at the end. So it becomes what our previous one was on the inside. Negative 5x minus 9 over positive x squared plus 3. How do I multiply that negative through? Do you remember? Top or bottom? Not both. I'm going to pick the top again. And so I multiply it to the top. It becomes positive 5x plus 9 still over x squared plus 3. Okay. Are you talking about like this? Make everything positive? Is that what you're saying? Um, not necessarily. Because it kind of depends on what the pieces are you have in there. Okay. You would think so, but not exactly.
Okay, guys, you can start looking at homework, but we do still have the back of the notes to finish tomorrow, right? So we'll finish notes. Homework we do Friday then.